in the final section of chapter seven, we're gonna talk a little bit about the regulation of cellular respiration. We're not gonna to go too deep into this. Your biochemistry course, if you go on to take that, we'll talk all about this, but I wanna talk about regulation in the context of why do it, right? So we're gonna talk about some things like feedback inhibition, um, how they play a role here. Um, and identify places that we can control uh, some of these things like the electron transport chain. So why do we need to regulate our cellular respiration? Well, really in order not to waste resources, we have to regulate it. So when we need energy, like Courtney DeWalter, the, what I would argue is the greatest ultra runner here, she is amazing. She needs energy when she's running uphill, right? Uh, she uses a lot less than me because she's way more efficient, but we all need energy when we're moving, right? But we don't need max ATP generation when we're sleeping, right? So uh, we would instead need just a little bit and we could conserve that glucose, save it for a time when we need it, right? So that means we have to have a way of turning up respiration and turning down respiration. Sometimes also you need to build other things. So sometimes you don't need ATP or you need to spend ATP to, to build other molecules. So we have to have ways of regulating what's going on in here. I'm gonna talk about some specifics here. Um, don't get too deep in the weeds here, but I just wanna show you some of the things that uh, you might be interested in later in your biological career. So here's a great regulatory mechanism that looks at how we uh, basically control the access of glucose to the cell. So in the cell, there are transporters called glucose transport proteins or gluts. The more gluts you have in the cell membrane, the more you can transport, right? So if you have very few gluts in the cell membrane, glucose is not gonna go into that cell at a high rate. Glut proteins are stored in vesicles, and when they are needed, they can move to the membrane and allow the transport of glucose. So when your cell gets a signal, like from the insulin protein, which is a hormone, the insulin receptor tells those vesicles, hey, we need more gluts, and the gluts move to the membrane, allowing more glucose to go into the cell. Generally, your cells are gonna have a few of these gluts, but when they get that signal, you'll get more there. So it's not like an on off switch, so much as like a knob where we can crank up or turn down the amount that this is happening. So this is a great example of a signal causing a response in the cell. There's also control at the level of glycolysis. I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple examples here. Um, what I want you to take away from this though is not the specifics, but realizing how control usually happens at the level of enzymes and that it is sensing different signals. So hexokinase, the first enzyme in glycolysis is a key regulatory step. Can actually kind of control if glucose stays in the cell or if it leaves the cell. We also have regulatory steps at Step three, enzyme phosphofructokinase. We don't need to know how it works, don't worry. Um, or at step 10, pyruvate kinase, that can, that can regulate this. Phosphofructose kinase is actually the, the major regulator here. Um, if you have high levels of ATP, it actually inhibits this enzyme. It like turns it down. It's like, hey, I already got plenty of ATP. Let's crank down your activity, phosphofructokinase. Citrate, part of the TCA cycle, also can inhibit it. If you have lots of citrate in the TCA cycle, you've already got lots of stuff going in there. So we just turn down the level of this because we're already producing lots of ATP. Uh, when ATP drops or citrate drops, then the level of phosphofructokinase, its uh, activity goes up. So we have enzymes and we have things that sense the presence of something. So like we talked about in uh, glycolysis, phosphofructokinase, what is it sensing? Well, low energy levels, low ATP, that's, that's the thing it's sensing. So, right, when there's high AMP, there's like, an, there's not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of ATP around. We have other places where we're looking at, like, if there's ADP around, 
If you have a high level of ADP, that means you don't have very much ATP. That means we need to increase the rate of metabolism here in, in respiration. So we crank up the citric acid cycle. Uh, same thing in the electron transport chain. If we have high levels of ADP, we increase the activity. On the flip side, if we have high levels of ATP, we probably don't need to keep spending energy making more ATP. So we decrease the level of things here. So we're sensing stuff and there are receptors that sense this um, and the enzymes themselves can often detect this as well. How they do it, we'll talk a little bit about that in a later chapter, um, but you can learn all about that in a biochemistry course as well. So we have things that get sensed and they're going to influence the rate of uh, pathway activity. ADP generally means there's not enough ATP, so we crank up the rate. If you have high ATP or NADH, that means you've produced a lot. We don't need any more. Let's decrease the level of this. Review question. The effect of high levels of ADP is to blank in cellular respiration. Pause the video, look at these options. So ADP is created when you cut a phosphate off ATP. ADP is lower energy. That means you have, if you have high levels of ADP, low levels of ATP. That means you need to increase the activity of enzymes in respiration, right? We want to crank up our ATP generation because we got a lot of ADP here. We need to rebuild ATP stores. So in summary, it's not always necessary to make the maximum amount of ATP in all our cells or tissues, right? When we're sleeping or resting or not physically active, we need less than when we're running up the side of a mountain. Regulatory mechanisms help preserve our resources and our energy, right? We're saving that glucose for when we really need it. We talked about glut transporters. Um, they're not located in the cell membrane until insulin signals that there's sugar around to move into the cell. We talked a little bit about steps of glycolysis that can be regulated. Mainly that's step three. Uh, if there's high levels of ATP or citrate, it turns down the rate of that enzyme because we already have lots. Um, and so many catabolic pathways are sensing ATP and ADP. When you have high ATP, we downregulate many of these things. And when we have high levels of ADP, we're upregulating. We need to make more ATP in that case. All right, we made it through the catabolic part, the, uh, the chapter seven. In chapter eight, we'll talk about photosynthesis, which is anabolic in nature.